So let's talk a second about freedom. You've heard us talk about freedom over the last few years. You've probably seen me tweet about it occasionally. And freedom is not only having all of the capabilities that allow you to build anything you want, like we just talked about, but it's also the ability not to be locked into abusive or onerous relationships or one-size-fits-all characterizations or tools. And to share a little bit about what that really means, let's come back to the house band and listen to what they and George Michael have to say about that. I don't belong to you, and you don't belong to me. I like those words. I think that's what builders really want, and I think they especially want it in the database space. And if you think about it, the last 20 years have been a very uncomfortable, unpleasant place for most companies with the database providers they've had to use. These are companies that are very expensive, that have high lock-in, lock are proprietary, and really are abusive to their customers. These are folks that don't care very much about their customers. You can just see earlier this year, Oracle overnight doubled the price of their software to run on AWS and on Microsoft. Who does that to their customers? Somebody who doesn't care about their customers. Somebody who views customers as a means to their financial ends. And it's why customers are trying to move as fast as they can to the open engines. These are engines like MySQL and Postgres and MariaDB. But to get the same type of performance on those open engines that you get on the commercial grade databases, it's possible, but it's hard. And it takes work and it takes tuning. We've done a lot of it. It's not easy to do. And so customers asked us to try and thread that needle for them. They wanted the performance of commercial grade databases with the pricing and the friendliness of the open engines. And so that's why we spent a few years building Amazon Aurora, which is our own database engine, which is fully MySQL and Postgres compatible. It has several times the performance of the highest end implementations of Postgres and MySQL. It has at least as much durability and availability as the commercial grade database engines, but it's a tenth of the price. It is the fastest growing service in the history of AWS, and it remains so. And you can kind of see it with the customer momentum. So a couple years ago, we were here at reInvent, and we talked about uh, the start of this huge momentum for Aurora, and we talked about companies like Yahoo and Earth Networks and NBC Universal that were using it. Last year, we came and we explained that we had three and a half times the number of customers using Aurora at that point, and companies like Netflix and Redfin and LexisNexis and Ticketmaster were now using it. This year, another two and a half times that number of customers are running Aurora, and that list expands to companies like FINRA and Expedia and Verizon and CBS Interactive and Dow Jones and Hulu. Lots of customers running on Aurora, people very excited about. And there are a lot of things that people like about Aurora. One of the biggest things that people love is the high performance and the high availability they get from Aurora. And it's very much because of the scale-out architecture that we have. So customers can scale out lots of read replicas, up to 15 read replicas. And in fact, it allows them to run millions of database reads per second with that scale-out capability. Earlier this year, we gave you the capability to auto-scale, so you don't have to figure out when you want to expand the replicas. We can do that for you. Customers love that architecture. When a read fails, it just fails over, and it fails over in less than a second, so there's no interruption to your application at all. And while customers love that, they said, you know, it would really be awesome if you guys would consider doing the same thing with rights. You know, today we have a single master for rights, and if, if there's a failure, we promote a read replica, and that happens in less than 30 seconds, which is pretty great for most databases. But people said, gosh, could you still try and find a way to make it as seamless as you have it for reads? So the team has worked on that, and I'm excited to announce the preview of Aurora Multimaster, which is a scale out for both reads and writes. And so with Aurora Multimaster, it creates multiple reads and writes uh, and master nodes across multiple availability zones. 
It means it allows your applications to transparently tolerate failure of any of these masters, or even an entire availability zone. And if one of your writes fails now, instead of the about 30 seconds, it'll fail in 100 milliseconds. It'll have completely no impact to your application. It becomes the first relational database service with scale out across multiple data centers. You can see even with Oracle Rack, the advice and the base implementation is that you, you're confined to a single room within a, a single availability zone or, or data center. Multi-master Aurora scales out reads and writes across multiple data centers. And then you also, because it's a true relational database, that's SQL compliant, you don't have to rewrite your applications with some kind of proprietary language. We are uh, opening the preview today for single region multi-master. We will add multi-region multi-master in 2018. So let's look at the other end of the spectrum. So we have a lot of customers who say, I love Aurora. I want to be able to use Aurora. But here's one of my problems. I have a number of databases that are not fully occupied. You know, they, they may be dev and test databases. They may have a spike at the same time every day. They may have a few intermittent spikes. And today, my alternatives are I have to buy software, put it on a machine, and run it all the time, which is paying full price for both the software and the machine. Or I can use a managed service like Aurora but again, I'm paying for that database instance the entire time, regardless of how busy it is or isn't. And customers said, well, is there a way that we can use Aurora, but also only pay for what we use? So again, the team went back and thought about this. It's not a simple problem, I might add. And I'm excited to announce the preview of Aurora Serverless. which is on-demand, auto-scaling, serverless Aurora. And so what you get here is you get all the capabilities of Aurora. It doesn't require you to provision any database instances. It automatically scales up when your database is busy, scales back down when it's not. It starts up on demand and shuts down when it's not in use at all, and you pay only by the second when your database is being used. That is pretty different. So let's look at the evolution of databases over the last number of years. And I think that over the last couple decades, people have largely used relational databases for everything. You know, ERP and CRM and e-commerce applications have used relational databases because they've needed th those transactional capabilities most of the um, databases store gigabytes of data, and relational databases work pretty well for most things. But in this day and age, where it's so much less expensive and so much easier now to store data, especially with the cloud, most of these databases now aren't gigabytes. They're terabytes and sometimes petabytes and exabytes. And when you get into those layers and those amounts of storage in a database, relational don't work nearly as well. They kind of break down. And so what you've seen over the last number of years is when you have these applications that have mil millions of users that need to do these fast lookups, they really want a key value database or a document store. And that's why we built DynamoDB. And if, just to give you an example, the type of scale for DynamoDB, in Amazon Prime Day, which was our biggest retail day in the history of the company back in July of this year, it was about 30 hours. At the linchpin of Prime Day was DynamoDB. And during those 30 hours, it processed 3.34 trillion requests and peaked at 12.9 million requests per second. This is unusual scale. We have a lot of customers who very successfully run Mongo and Cassandra on top of AWS. But when you get into the really high scale levels, they very often want something that's more managed like DynamoDB. Also, what you've seen over the last number of years is lots of people want to use an in-memory database. You have a cache where they can access data in microseconds. And that's why we built ElastiCache, which today is really primarily 
manage Redis, and manage Memcached. Now, if you look at DynamoDB, if you go back a second to DynamoDB, as I mentioned, what we're starting to see is as customers are deciding they want those fast lookups in non-relational databases and they want a key value store, they're turning to DynamoDB. And you can see the list of customers here is pretty astonishing. And the growth, particularly over the last 12 to 18 months, is pretty amazing. And you see companies like Snap and Lyft and Tinder and Redfin and Comcast and Under Armour and BMW and Toyota all leveraging DynamoDB in a very expansive way. Now, today, DynamoDB already allows you to replicate your tables within a region, and multiple availability zones within a region. But customers are very interested in being able to replicate those tables across multiple regions. And that's because, you know, if you think about it, think about Expedia. They want a user that's using their mobile app in North America to have the same customer experience and latency when they use that mobile app in Europe. And that's, you know, today you can replicate globally in DynamoDB, but it's a lot of work. And, uh, and a lot of people don't do it because it's a lot of work. And so I'm excited to announce today the launch of DynamoDB Global Tables. <laughs> which becomes the first fully managed multi-master, multi-region database in the world. And so global tables, it's pretty exciting. Um, now your data is replicated across multiple regions. Um, it means that you can benefit from the same low latency in every region that you decide to deploy it in. Um, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's especially important for customers who have global end users who want the same customer experience. It's really simple to set up. Uh, it's just a few clicks that, uh, that you have to do. You now, with, with the ability to have global tables, you can now withstand an outage in an entire region. So it's huge uh, reliability capabilities it also gives you. And this is generally available for you today. What about backups? So if you think about DynamoDB, people love the availability. They love the low latency. They love the high throughput. Now they love the fact that they can deploy their global tables in lots of regions simultaneously for that reliability and that customer experience. But you need to back up your data, too. And again, we have customers who've been doing this for a long period of time with DynamoDB because they have to. But it's been much more difficult than they've wanted. And so the team has worked really hard on this. And I'm excited to announce today the launch of DynamoDB Backup and Restore. So this will allow you to do on-demand continuous backups. You can instantaneously back up everything in your database. You won't find that capability anywhere else. And then you'll also be able to do point-in-time restore up to the second for the last 35 days. Again, capability that's really important if you have some kind of application error or corruption of your data. Um, this, you can back up hundreds of terabytes of data that are serving large applications with single millisecond digit latency. And you can do so without any interruption to your application. This is, again, something you won't find anywhere else. On-demand backups is generally available today. And point-in-time restore is coming in early 2018.